Winter's model is another method to forecast data with trend and seasonal components. Winter's model combines Holt's model with the seasonal model. Doing that gives an advantage over decomposition because it is adaptive. We use the decomposition model as a method to initialize Winter's model. The Winter's model's formula looks like Holt's model with the addition of a seasonal factor. The updating of the level includes the seasonal model and Holt's model. The formula to update the trend is exactly Holt's model. The formula to update the seasonal factor is the seasonal model. So again, Winter's model is just a combination of the seasonal model and Holt's model, so we can include both trend and seasonal components in our forecast in an adaptive model. Using decomposition, we can determine an overall average. That's our level. We can determine four seasonal factors. And we also have the trend from regression. So when we use decomposition, we can get the components we need for Winter's model. With our level, trend, and four seasonal factors for our quarterly data, we can make forecasts. We're going to take our current level plus one period worth of trend to project a regression line forward, and then we adjust that by multiplying the result by 0.8 to adjust it down because our spring season is a lower level season to get our first forecast. Similarly for the second, third, fourth, and we can continue this on just increasing the number of periods of trend we add to the model and picking the appropriate seasonal factor. With the decomposition initialization, our first forecast from Winter's model is identical to what we would get from decomposition. Where the model differs is once we get some real data for spring of 2019, we'll be able to update the model and that will give it its adaptive characteristic. Now suppose we are in 2019 we have our first spring sales value of 152. We compare that to our forecast of 136.7 and realize we have under forecast and under forecast fairly significantly. So what we need to do is update our level, our trend, and our seasonal factor so that going forward we have a model that more matches our current data. First we'll update the level. The formula for updating the level is L of t is equal to alpha times the actual value in period t divided by the seasonal factor in period t minus p. In other words, we've got to go back one season, go back to spring of 2018 to figure out what spring does to our sales. We take that plus 1 minus alpha times the level we had in period T minus 1 plus the trend we had in period T minus 1. So we project forward what level we thought we would have in spring of 2019 and we balance that with what we observed. So since we under forecast we're going to increase our level from what we thought we would have had. We're talking about period 9 so we're going to have alpha times the actual in period 9 divided by the seasonal factor in 9 minus 4 because p equals 4 we're talking quarterly data so that's the seasonal factor for period 5 we're going to add to that 1 minus alpha times the level in period 8 plus the trend in period 8 in other words we're going to take this level plus one period of trend to say what we thought the level would be in period 9 and we're going to balance that with what we observed in the data what that looks like as a level. So alpha for this problem is 0 0.3 again that's given in an exam situation as a forecaster you pick the alpha, beta, and gamma. Actual sales in period 9 was 152 we're dividing by a seasonal factor of 0 0.8. So this is equivalent to 
190 as a sales level. We're going to take 30% of that plus 70% of 163.2 plus 7.7, the level and trend in period 8. This is 170.9. So we were expecting the level to be 170.9. Having sales in the spring of 152 is equivalent to a level of 190 because, again, sales in spring are down 80%. So when we divide out that 0.8 factor, it looks like a level of 190. We thought it was 170.9, so we we're going to adjust to 176.6. So our new updated level is 176.6, and again, the Winters model formulas make it adapted. We're going to adapt to our under forecast or over forecast. So if there's a pattern, if our model changes underneath, we adjust to it. Next, the formula for updating the trend is T in period T is going to be equal to beta times the level in period T minus the level in period T minus 1 that represents our observed trend, comparing the two levels, plus 1 minus beta times the trend in period t minus 1. So beta in this problem is 0 0.4. Again, pretty aggressive. Typical value is more like 0 0.2. But we wanted different numbers in this problem so that it was easy for students to follow. So we're going to take 40% of the level in period 9 that we just estimated, we just updated, minus the level in period 8, plus 0 0.6 times the trend in period 8. And so we're going to take 0 0.4 times the level in period 9 is 176.6 minus the level in period 8 is 163.2. That difference is 13.4. So even with an updated level, it looks like the trend is underestimated based on that spring sales value of 152. Again, that could be a fluke, or it could really be a change in our demand. We don't know whether it's a change in our trend, a change in our seasonal factor, or that our level was estimated incorrectly. So we're bumping up the level a little bit, we're going to bump up the trend, and we're going to increase the seasonal factor. So all three are going to shift a little bit. If we see a continued pattern of under forecasting, we'll continue to adjust until we adapt to the new pattern. We're going to take 40% of that 13.4 and 60% of what we thought the trend was, which was 7.7. .7. And when we do the math, we get 10.0. So we're going to update our trend to 10.0 from 7.7. .7. Finally, we update the seasonal factor for spring. The seasonal factor updating formula is S sub t is equal to gamma times the actual value of sales in period t divided by the level in period t plus 1 minus gamma times the seasonal factor in period T minus P. So we want the seasonal factor for period 9. We want a new spring seasonal factor. That's going to be gamma times the actual sales in period 9 divided by the level in period 9. That's our observed seasonal factor with an updated level value. And 1 minus gamma seasonal factor of 9 minus 4, which is seasonal factor in period 5. Again, our last spring value was 0 0.8. We're going to update that because we under forecast. We're using 0 0.3 here times actual sales of 152 divided by our newly updated level of 176.6. This is equivalent to 0 0.86 as a seasonal adjustment. So we're going to take 30% of that plus 70% of 
of the 0 0.8 we thought we had before and we're going to have a new seasonal factor of 0 0.82. It doesn't seem like much of an increase, but it is an increase at the second decimal place, so it does have some impact on our forecast values. So we have a new seasonal factor of 0 0.82. We're not going to use that until spring of 2020, so we update seasonal factors and only get to use them once every year. With our newly updated values, we can forecast new values for summer, fall, and winter. These forecasts use the new trend and the new level, but the same seasonal factors that we had before. It's only when we get to spring of 2020 that we have both new level, trend, and a seasonal factor that was updated back in spring of 2019. As we move forward through time, we finally have summer sales values for 2019 and we have 303 as our sales, where we predicted 251.9. So we had a significant under forecast, and again, we need to update our level, trend, and seasonal factor going forward. To update the level in period 10, the formula tells us to use alpha times the actual sales in period 10, divided by the seasonal factor now in period six. Again, the notation, which was a little bit clumsy, makes a little more sense. It's easier to do without trying to figure it out. We're talking about summer, so the last summer we knew was in period six, where the seasonal factor is 1.35. Summer's our big quarter, 35% above a typical sales quarter. We're gonna take that plus one minus alpha times the level in period nine plus the trend in period nine this represents what we thought the level would be before we got the new data that showed that we under forecast. So again, alpha 0 0.3, actual sales were 303, divided by the seasonal factor of 1.35. That means that this sales level of 303 looks like a level of 224.4. We're gonna take that plus 0 0.7 times the level in period nine, which is 176.6 plus the trend of 10.0. And that gives us 186.6. So we thought the level was gonna be 186. Sales of 303 in summer are equivalent to a level of 224. So we're gonna update our level to 198. Zero. We're going to adapt the data. We're not jumping all the way to 224, but we're going to bump it up significantly to 198.0. Next, we update the trend, and the formula is the trend in period 10 will be equal to beta times the level in period 10 minus the level in period 9 plus 1 minus beta times the trend that we thought we had in period 9. So this is going to be 0 0.4. That's our beta for this problem. The level in period 10 is now updated as 198.0 minus the previous level of 176.6. This difference is 21.4. That's compared to 0 0.6 times the trend of 10.0 we thought we had. So it looks like twice the trend even after updating the level. So we are gonna up our trend to 14.6. Finally, we update the seasonal factor for summer, period 10. The formula is that S in period 10 is equal to gamma times the actual sales in period 10 divided by the level in period 10 plus 1 minus gamma times the seasonal factor and 10 minus 4 is going to be 6. So that's going to be 
gamma we're using 0 0.3 our actual sales were 303 divided by the newly updated level of 198.0 again this looks like a seasonal factor of 1.53 and we're going to add to that 70 percent of what we thought we had which was our seasonal factor in summer the last time we knew what summer did 1.35 and so our updated seasonal factor is 1.40 which again, we're not going to use until summer of 2020. Now with the updated level, trend, and seasonal factor, these next forecasts for the next three periods are using the new level trend. Here we're using the updated seasonal factor from spring. And when we talk about summer 2020, we have our new seasonal factor plus our updated level and trend. When we complete this process of forecasting and updating, again, 2019 is an ex post forecast region, so it allows us to compare our actual sales to our forecasts and see how well our model did. We're adapting each time we make this comparison. And then finally, we have our first real forecast for 2020, where we don't have any real data. That's our guess of the future. Graphically, we fit the model using two years worth of data. Here's our ex post forecast. This is where we're going to compare to. And this was really quite high. So we saw a big difference there. It could have been some strange random occurrence. We have to be careful that there wasn't a sales promotion that we didn't factor into our forecasting model. We'd really need to make an adjustment, make this more of a causal model. This, you can see, creates a fairly high forecast for that period. We're maybe not quite where we thought this would go if this was 100% accurate, but we did boost that summer seasonal factor. So this looks like a fairly reasonable forecast going forward.